Thank you all very much. Um, thank you for inviting me to your paralegal organization's Lunch and Learn seminar. Carol Conley and Claudia Jones, who work at my firm, have told me a lot about these seminars, and I'm honored to be here. They've also warned me, however, that I only have a few minutes to speak. Never an easy assignment for a trial attorney, <laughs> but I shall do my best. Our topic for today's session is going to be division of marital assets. Now, all of you work in family law, so I'm sure you're aware of what a complicated issue that can be, especially in divorces in which there are a lot of assets or in which the assets are difficult to classify. So first, let's do a quick review. As you know, there are two approaches to division of marital property. One is the community property approach, and the other is the equitable division approach. The community property approach assumes that each spouse has a vested interest in one half of the property acquired during the marriage partnership because each acted for the mutual benefit of it. And so child rearing would be considered a contribution just as uh, a financial contribution would be. Now, only eight states use this approach. Our state divides marital property according to equitable division principles. And like community property states, uh, we acknowledge that both parties contribute to the assets of the marriage. When a couple divorces, their property needs to be classified as either separate or marital. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But basically, marital property is property acquired during the marriage either through, through either or both spouses, and separate property is property that was owned at the time of the marriage, gifts or inheritance. What the equitable distribution of marital assets really means is the subject of ongoing debate. But as a practical matter, the process breaks down into four steps. So. Uh, I'd like to briefly review those four steps with your comments, of course. <laughs> the first step is defining the property. There are two types of property, tangible and intangible. Who can give me an example of tangible property? A house, car, furniture, jewelry. Exactly. Tangible property is pretty in easy to define, isn't it? But um, what about intangible property? Who can give me an example of intangible property? How about stocks and bonds or even pension plans? Pension plans would definitely be considered an intangible property, as would stocks and bonds. Right now, as a matter of fact, our firm is working on a case uh, which involves the question as to whether um, accrued vacation and sick leave time should be classified as property. Uh, the courts aren't very clear on their findings. They're, excuse me, the courts are not consistent, not very consistent anyway, on their findings. And so, well, we're not real sure how we're gonna come out on that one. Keep them crossed. Now, after we've defined which assets are property, what's the next step? Well, wouldn't you have to determine which assets are marital and which assets are separate? You're correct. Again, now, this would seem like an easy process. Uh, marital property is property that was acquired during the marriage, and separate property would be property that was owned at the time of the marriage. But nothing in family law is ever very simple, as I'm sure you're all aware of. For example, is the $10,000 piece of art Jane borrowed money to buy two months before the marriage considered separate property at the time of the divorce? Jane would probably say no, and Bob would probably say yes. What about gifts? What about appreciation? If, J if Jane's $10,000 piece of art is worth $50,000 at the time of the divorce, is Bob entitled to some of the appreciation? Again, she'd probably say no, and he'd probably say yes. Um, so let's say we've determined which of Jane and Bob's assets uh, are property and let's say we've defined which are marital and which are separate. Uh, our next step can be the most complicated, valuing the assets. 
What we all hope is that our clients can divide up their property without going through the process of having their assets valued. Our firm always hires experts when we need to value an asset. In fact, I've compiled a long list of experts. The ones we use most often are financial experts when we need to know the value of a pension plan and uh, real estate appraisers when we need to know the value of a piece of property. But we've even hired experts to give us the value of doll collections too. <laughs> yeah, I rely on experts all the time, especially in cases where, uh, especially in cases in which the parties own a business or in which uh, one of them has a complicated uh, stock option or pension plan as part of his or her employment. It can be very expensive to hire these experts, but to be honest, it's just too risky for our clients not to have all the information prior to settlement or at the time of trial. I see that Carol and, I see that Carol and Claudia are giving me the signal to speed it up. Um, so let's just talk briefly about the last step, shall we? Um, after the property's been defined, been classified as marital or separate, and after a, the value of that property has been ascertained, we're left with the big job of distributing those assets in an equitable manner. Now, community property states use different standards. Uh, they divide the property equally between the spouses. Uh, in our state, however, we have statutes that give us guidelines as to uh, what is fair, just, or equitable. Obviously, our clients usually disagree as to what those terms mean. So, what happens if they can't reach an agreement about how the property should be distributed? They go to court. Yep, and then a judge gets to determine how the property is divided. Sometimes there's no other way than to go to trial, but I always ask my clients, would you rather make a decision as to what happens to your financial future or leave it to a judge who has no interest in your life? We could talk for hours about the legal, practical, and philosophical questions of property division. That and custody are the two biggest hurdles in divorces. But we all have to go back to work. Thanks again for having me. It's been a pleasure talking to you.